Hello, good morning, good evening, how are we doing? Welcome back to the channel. And today we're just going to have a quick kind of review of Vanguard, my thoughts, opinions on it, and what I'm hoping for in the future. Beta obviously is finishing up today on Wednesday, I believe. And yeah, I've put in probably about 10 hours into it. I'm just trying to figure out what's going on, um, see how it feels. Uh, am I going to enjoy it? Before we start that, I need to address my expectations of the game because I think it's very important to your own opinion as well um, what your expectations are. My expectations have greatly reduced uh, since Cold War released. Um, after Modern Warfare 2019 I was very excited for a Treyarch version of Modern Warfare 2019 but we didn't really get that we just got another Black Ops 3.5 um, so it was kind of I, I was just massively disappointed in that game um, so I just kind of whatever now Call of Duty. It's um, as long as it's not too miserable and I can, you know, enjoy getting the guns leveled up for for Warzone or whatever. Um, I'll be happy enough. I, I've come to realize as well that it's never going to be the same anymore. You know, I, I'm not going to get another Black Ops two, another Black Ops one, uh, Modern Warfare, COD four, things like that. I mean, it's just not going to happen. Um, it Call of Duty has passed its prime, and I can really only expect average games from now that are tolerable at best. So in that regard, I think this game is okay. It's um, it's not great. It's not bad though, and I think I can put up with it for a couple of months at least, and I'll be happy enough to camel grind and things like that for Warzone. So. That's the long and short of it, the, the too long didn't read version. It's okay, um, it's tolerable, um, but if you are expecting the best Call of Duty ever, you're going to be disappointed. We're going to talk about two things basically. We have the what I call beta problems, which are things that are glitches or whatever that can be fixed before the full game releases. And then we have you know, the actual review of the design and what I think needs to be changed there. So I'm going to quickly just knock out a few beta problems um, just very quickly. Okay. First thing is MP40, SCG44 need some serious recoil. Spawns are broken in some areas, like they are really, really bad sometimes, especially in patrol and like the 18 versus 18 blitz modes. Um, which, can, you know, I mean, obviously you have massive games like that, it's always going to be an issue, but even still I think there could be improvements here. Uh, the sun is absolutely ridiculous. Uh, my retinas no longer exist. Uh, that needs to be removed. That needs to be tuned significantly. Uh, and then as well, overall visibility is quite poor. I I, I really find it hard to see people uh, in most of the maps. I think the worst one is definitely that god awful snow map, uh, Red Star, um, with the snow and the darkness of it. It's just really really hard to see people. I'm I just find myself basically looking for red dots above their heads uh, just to know if it's an enemy or not. Um, so it's that needs to change drastically as well. Uh, there was some performance problems. Overall performance was quite good. Uh, like I had no issues running on my PC while streaming or recording. Uh, I was getting kind of averaging about 120 uh, frames per second which is good for me. Um, but the game did crash quite a lot. Again, beta problem. Should be fixed by the full game. Uh, audio, uh, I assume this was, you know, a glitch. I, I don't think they intended to have all the audio issues there. Uh, the main ones being, can't tell we were being shot from. Uh, the, the dialogue guy is really, really annoying. I have to actually just turned him down, but even still I think that should be, that should be fixed. Um, we'll get into footsteps in a little minute. On to the actual core design of the gameplay that may not change uh, with the beta. The first thing to note is it's on the Modern Warfare engine, which is great. Um, and not only that, but it also feels like a COD game. You know, it feels like a traditional Call of Duty gameplay. And the reason I bring that up is because Modern Warfare 2019, while it was really good with its engine and its technology, it was, didn't feel like a Call of Duty game at all. Uh, it was very foreign to me. Uh, just the way the maps were designed and things and how the just the overall gameplay decisions made there I think were quite poor whereas uh, Cold War was on an old engine which is terrible but it ha actually felt like a Call of Duty game and it was 
We never got we haven't got a mix of both yet um until this game. I think the engine is good obviously because it's Modern Warfare 2019, but the the core gameplay is also designed well and it feels like Call of Duty, so that for me is huge. And the elephant in the room obviously is skill based matchmaking is there and it is quite strong. Um it depends really though. I find on Blitz it's not so bad. But if you play in 6v6, yeah, it, it is quite uh, strong, you know. I, st I had My first few games were quite good, and then after that, they, they just piled in the, the sweats. So, um, again, I've come to accept it now. I just don't think they're going to change it, no matter how much we scream at them. <laughs> the bigger picture is more important to them, and realistically... We're probably less than 10% of the community who are against skill-based matchmaking, the other 90%, well, I would say 89% don't know it exists, and then 1% think it's actually good. Um, they're also a fairly loud uh, minority. Um, so yeah, skill-based matchmaking is there, but I just have accepted it now, and it's whatever to me. I think Blitz is great. I was, I think that's a really good addition to the, to the, to the playlist. Um, maps are okay. Uh, they feel like traditional Call of Duty maps, you know, three lanes with Eagle's Nest, you've got those three lanes, you either go on left or right or down the middle. Uh, the same thing with, uh, I can't remember, that nighttime map, or a hotel I think it's called, um, three lanes, and then you've got that terrible snow map, um, which is just awful. Uh, there's no good part of that map really, uh, it's just a big mess. And TTK is a bit too quick, uh, time to kill for those that don't know, so you die really quickly. Um, and it it could just do it a little bit more, I think. I don't know if it's because I was in sway lobbies where MP40 and all that was being overused, but yeah, the time to kill overall just feels a little bit quick. I just think it could do it a little bit more to increase the skill gap. The footsteps need to be louder, but I prefer them as they are over the way they were in 2019. I would nearly prefer no footstep at all than... Modern Warfare 2019 footsteps where people could just wait for you around the corner because they know you're coming. Like, they could do it just being a little bit louder because sometimes like there'd be lads in your ear whispering sweet nothings to you and you just can't hear them at all and then you're getting executed. So I, I don't know, I, I think they just need to be slightly louder. Uh, we see the return of the Elim system which is basically assists counting as kills. I've never been a fan of this. Uh, they introduced this, I think they actually do introduced it in Black Ops 4 but I only noticed it in Cold War because I didn't play much Black Ops 4, but I'm just not a fan. It's just a kill is a kill, assist is assist. It's just, don't, it's it's something to make us feel better, like when we see at the end of the game, if we feel like we've had a rough game, you know, we've gone negative, but then we've actually gotten a few extra kills because they count, assist counts kills. So instead of going 15 to 20, we actually went 20 to 20, so hey, I broke even. But really, I, I just think it's a... It's a comfort for us for getting our ass handed to us by sweaty lobbies, and I'm just I just don't appreciate it. Um, a kill is a kill, not an assist. Uh, Ghost and recon. So a controversial decision here was the recon perk. Uh, so they've instead of having a traditional mini map, you have to actually use a perk to have it. Um, I would be all for actually just removing this perk altogether and giving us the normal mini map. But if they're going to have this perk, I think they need to balance it by having it in the same category as Ghost. So. It's, you can either choose to have a minimap uh, and no ghost, or you have ghost but no minimap. I think that would be a fairly decent balance because obviously a lot of people are running around with ghost. With the way the UAV spam is in this game, ghost is extremely powerful, so I think it just needs to be one or the other. A sprint to fire time needs to be reduced because it's quite hard to be aggressive in this game without just being outgunned by someone who's sitting there waiting for you with you know a bar and SCG mounted around the corner. You have absolutely no chance to react in time because by the time you stop sprinting and get to aim down the site, you're already dead. So I think it's uh, important that they actually reduce that a bit. There is some perks to reduce your sprint to fire time uh, and things like that, your aim down the site speed time, but uh, the the cons outweigh the pros really when you put those perks on for the most part. So I think they just need to give a general buff to all guns to just aim down sight faster or or to get the sprint to fire time down. Uh, another thing is 10 attachments. I don't know how this is going to play out when the full game releases and everyone is, you know, all the attachments are there. The one thing I do know is there's going to be some broken ass guns. 
and some metas and things like that uh, they might just be overdoing it with all these different attachments and ammo types and magazines and perks things like that so i don't know that's more so an expectation thing and i hope that they can fix it but yeah i feel like that's going to be a fairly massive issue so those are my takeaways from the beta and the last thing we're going to cover is what i hope to see more of and uh, what i'm expecting from the full game uh, so what i really want is a good camo progression grind so i've kind of discovered in myself that I, there's three things i need in a game to make me keep playing it uh first one being a sense of achievement so as as i'm talking about camos and progression things like that others if uh if i feel competitive in the game and i feel like i'm really good and there's a reward for that then i'll keep playing it and the third one is, is actually if i just enjoy it so if i enjoy the game and the design um I'll, I'll keep playing it and i think i have the third one i i think it's well made and i could keep playing it but to keep me playing it long term i'm going to need to have a camo grind and i i'm going to need to feel good about my skill level or whatever and there needs to be some sort of reward for good players because that was one of the things of cold war i really despised i felt like good players were just they were there for no reason you know we were playing for nothing essentially yeah and yet we're sweating so hard in these lobbies like we need some sort of ranking uh, we need some sort of leaderboard to distinguish ourselves or something like this um, i'm not saying a ranked play specifically but for pubs i think there needs to be something uh, or else just remove the skill based matchmaking altogether so or even just getting giving us more XP uh, if we're in a sweatier lobby, you know, if the if the average KD of the lobby is higher, then there should be some sort of multiplier, you know, if uh, if your lobby is a 0.8, for example, then you get a 0.8 multiplier, but if you're in a lobby that's a 1.2 or whatever, then you get a 1.2 multiplier for your XP, something, just anything, and this as well will stop reverse boosting. Well, it might not stop it, but at least it will be way more obvious when people are reverse boosting. You know, people can see that, oh, they only got, like, uh, a 0 0.7 multiplier, so they're in a bot lobby. You know, things like that, I think, would really help. And, um, what else? Uh, Wars and integration. So, obviously, I play mostly Warzone now because the Call of Duty's as of late have been pretty terrible. Um, so, the Warzone integration, I think, needs to be very, very careful. Like, I really don't like the approach of what I expect they're going to do is just throw all these World War II weapons into Warzone with the new map and keep all the other Warzone stuff in it. I would actually, I, I think it's time to retire the old Warzone and just give us a new one. Give us Warzone 2.0 and just have these new guns. Uh, that might be a controversial opinion and I'm, I, I'd like to hear other people's opinion on this but i think that like the modern warfare gun should be gone the cold war guns gone just wipe them all together start fresh because just having three different eras of guns is just going to be extremely messy like are we really going to use the m1 grand against the kilo or m4 like you know the, it's 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 just it doesn't make much sense and i know Call of Duty doesn't have to make sense but it, it's just kind of a glaring Thing. like i mean how are world war ii guns supposed to compete against modern warfare 2020 guns you know like and as well looking at that menu when you start up the game there's four different there's gonna be f there is four different options now you have three call of duty regular multiplayer games and you have wars on there like i was like just it, it's just gotten too much now uh i think just start fresh just the new map just these guns and then you can keep adding new guns and honestly, I think they'd probably make more money this way as well, because more people would be incentivized to buy Vanguard then. That's just my opinion. I don't know if I'm right. I'd, I'm, I'm, all, I'm open for some suggestions um, to understand if that wouldn't be possible or it shouldn't be a thing. Because obviously, it's like then I'm losing all my camos that I've grinded hard for and things like that. But I, I'd probably take that over having like so many guns. I, I, I'm not going to count them, but there is like, there must be hundreds of guns in, in Warzone now at this stage, with all the different pistols and launchers and all this Cold War. You've Cold War versions of the same gun. You've got the Cold War AK, the Modern Warfare AK, things like that, you know, so it's just a bit messy, and I think the integration needs to be careful, because I don't want a repeat of the Cold War integration where you had 50 broken guns 
integrated into the, the the game. Like we all remember what happened with the DMR, you know. <laughs> like I don't want that again. Yeah, as that that's probably it. Um, another thing, actually, probably I wouldn't mind like a, a ground war game mode similar to Modern Warfare 2019 because I didn't play much 6v6 in Modern Warfare, but the ground war game was actually quite fun. And especially being in World War Two era, I think it'd be really cool to have you know tanks and stuff like that. Um, even though I despise tanks in Modern Warfare 2019, I think having a like a World War Two version of it would be really cool. So I think that would be a pretty decent idea. Um, but yeah, those are my thoughts and opinions. Anyway, things I could conjure up in 20 minutes of recording. So if um, if there's any more that you guys see, let me know in the comments. Um, and yeah, I look forward to the full game and hopefully I'm not proven wrong but so far so good Vanguard keep it up have a good one bye bye